Model Black Minority Myth, Africans in the U.S. Africans make up only 2% of the black population here in the U.S. This is a chart comparing the human capital among African Americans, African immigrants, and Caribbean immigrants. What's so wrong with being a model minority? This video will demonstrate that the model black minority myth is problematic for the black community for a number of reasons. The model minority perspective ascribes the relative lack of economic success by African Americans to a purported lack of positive work-related motivation, ethic, and attitudes. In the case of the black model minority myth, meritocracy asserts that African immigrants excel solely based on their talent and ability. It begs the question, if African immigrants can be successful, why can't other blacks be as well? This is problematic because it overlooks institutionalized racism and privilege. It blames the individual rather than critiquing structures that are racist at their core. The model minority myth is divisive because it unfairly labels Africans and African Americans as the good blacks and the bad blacks. These labels are responsible for the interracial tension between the two groups. This is racism's divide and conquer tactic. If society can convince a group that they are too different to be one, they will begin to fight each other instead of fighting for one another. The black model minority myth is self-silencing because it highlights successful immigrant stories and ignores the failures that do not fit into the model minority myth. People are reluctant to speak out against the system that benefits them. It discourages those who are facing discrimination from speaking out. Many times the success of African immigrants has been erroneously used as evidence that we are in a post-racial society. And sadly, many African immigrants do not speak out because they are told that racism is not their fight. How can African immigrants engage in effective anti-racism? As someone who is Nigerian American, I can tell you that I am torn when it comes to the model minority myth, or at least I was torn before I figured out what a detrimental effect it had on the black community. Um, at first, I was all up for accepting the idea that, you know, Africans were better at everything. The interesting thing is that the model black minority myth is it's good for us because, you know, it helps our reputation. Um, and this is something kind of recent because when I first got here, people were like, oh, you know, Africans are like African booty scratchers or whatever. And we we had a bad rap. It wasn't popular to be an African person. And then suddenly all these stats and all these studies came out and people were saying, you know, Africans are um, are very studious. They come in with a lot of education. And then they started doing I don't know if people noticed what they were doing. They were setting up this dichotomy and saying Africans are the good blacks and African Americans are the bad blacks. And we started buying into that. You should never have it be that people are furthering you at the detriment of someone else. But we as African people, in order to engage in effective anti-racism, need to first recognize that those images that we're seeing of black people are filtered images. They're not representative of all black people. There's an agenda. And, and you can, you know, you can categorize people any way you want and say, you know, people are lazy and that people don't know how to work hard or that's all someone setting up that agenda and telling you that this is what black people are. And if you accept that, if you accept that, then that's a problem. Because that means that you're buying into this idea that black people are pathological, that there's something wrong with them. We need to think of blackness in a diasporic sense. Being a dark shaded person on this earth, you're black. You're black. You might not have the same history, but, but our history today is now. You know, we're forming a history together. We need to not have it be a bitter and a bitter history where we're just fighting each other for no reason, really. And I think society has done a great job at separating us and making us feel like we have nothing in common with each other. Prejudice does not know how to read a degree. Prejudice does not know how to read a paycheck and say, okay, you have a lot of money, so I'm not going to discriminate. If you are a black person, there will be a time where you will face prejudice. Someone will, you know, be racist to you. You will not be able to do anything about it. And it sucks. 
it sucks. It sucks, but you need to realize that racism is not escapable. Just sitting and benefiting from the model black minority myth, that's not effective anti-racism. That is you using a system that is discriminating other people. You need to not be using this system if you know that it has such a detriment. And the funny thing is that the system that you're using could be detrimental to you. What if someone doesn't know you're African? Then you don't get that benefit, you know? The only reason this model black minority myth works is because it is in juxtaposition to black America. The minute that people don't recognize that you're African, just like that, you lose that privilege. And just like that, you could be the one being discriminated against. And this is the hardest part of anti-racism for a lot of people. But even if this system, this racist system benefits you in some way, if it is inherently racist at its core, you need to not be part of that system. You need to not feed the fire. You need to not be like, yeah, black people do suck. They, they suck a lot. You need to not be doing that because it's not beneficial. For black solidarity as a whole, you need to... You, you kind of need to be in unity. African people and African American people, stop poisoning other people's opinion of your own race, okay? Because I've heard so many black people be like, ugh, African people are so stuck up, or they're like little lap dogs for white people, they don't believe in racism just bad mouthing African people or I've heard African people be like oh black people they're so ghetto they're so this they're so uneducated why why would you do that why like what's the point because that's like you talking about about your own own family it makes you look bad it makes you look like you have no solidarity and that's the problem with blackness today we have no solidarity we have no like unified identity you don't have to be exactly like your neighbor to be unified but you need to be unified in the idea that we will all struggle we will all face discrimination, but if we have a like mind that says nobody should be discriminated against because of the color of their skin, then we can have some progress. Racism is our struggle, is everyone's struggle. Um, when we start trying to differentiate and say, well, I'm African, I'm, you know, I'm from the islands, that, I'm telling you, racism does not care. Anti-racism is possible if we develop anti-racist identities and divest ourselves of our investment in white supremacy.